Hi, my name is Julian Joseph, and I'm a quality engineer at Salesforce. And today I just want to show off how to automate Salesforce using Robot Framework. If you're not familiar with it, Robot Framework is an open source framework built on top of Python that allows you to run scripting automation um, that allows you to work with just about any tool on your computer. But today I really want to show off a particular Salesforce library and an open source project, MPSP, the Nonprofit Success Pack, which is a managed package, open source, that I'll put links to in the description for this video. So right now I have open a test within MPSP. Again, I'm gonna to link to this so you'll be able to look at these and modify them and even run them locally. Today I'm actually gonna be using a tool called Cumulus CI, which is another open source tool, which basically um, connects Salesforce and Robot to allow you to run these tests in the browser. Now you can do API testing, you can do UI testing. Today I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of both using API to generate some records and also do some modifications within the UI. Before I go over the details of this test too much, I do just want to show it in action first. I've actually got a Cumulus CI command here, something else I'll put in the description so you can see it, but you can see it's CCI task run robot, and then it's actually targeting this test. Now, part of the setup will be setting up Cumulus CI and setting up Salesforce DX, if you're not familiar with DX, um, something else I'll link to. I'm gonna assume you've already got those things set up and that you have an org ready to go, and then you're gonna be able to run these tests. So I'll go ahead and run this so we can see it running in the browser. When I run this, you can see that it's actually going to be hitting Salesforce DX, finding this org. This is what Cumulus CI is doing in the background. And then it automatically opens up this browser. On this browser window, based on what's in my test, it's gonna be, again, doing some UI, excuse me, some API calls to Salesforce and then modifying the UI and navigating to different pages. This particular test we'll see it's actually going to first navigate to an opportunity after it's created some test data, make a modification on this opportunity, specifically change its stage to closed one. Again, this is all happening through the test. I'm not doing this manually, but it's just using browser automation. It's actually using Selenium in the background to run some of these steps. You can see it's changing the stage to close one. Then it's going to navigate to another opportunity and actually do the same thing. Again, clicking edit, which is opening up that mo model. And then it's going to click stage and then closed one and then save it. Next, it's navigating to a nonprofit success pack custom object called recurring donations. Nonprofit success pack is for nonprofits, so recurring donations represents a donation that's being made over time, every month in this case. Those opportunities are actually representations of the donation. So this is a custom object and now it's actually going back to an opportunity. It's actually checking a value. It's making sure that it is still closed one. When I close that, that recurring donation, any donations that were already closed one should remain that way. So it's double checking that. And any future donations past that date are going to be set to close lost and now it's checking that close lost date and that's actually the end of the test so if it validates this as true or even if it validates this as false then it's going to let me know the success or failure of this test so back in my command line you can see that this individual test passed now i'm going to look at the test a little bit we're going to make a modification and then we're going to watch it fail in this particular test, I'm not going to go over every single keyword. I'm going to assume that you have some knowledge of Robot Framework, but I'll be linking to information about Robot Framework so you can learn how to build a test. But we've got some of our setup here at the top, including setting up some of the test data. Create dictionary might be a familiar keyword if you know Robot Framework. And then we have some other keywords down here in the actual running of the test. So some of the ones that you're seeing on the screen, it's actually doing an API query. We'll look at that one a little bit more detail a bit later. 
Um, as we start navigating around, it's going to a page, specifically a details page on the opportunity. And it's targeting a specific opportunity, looking for that opportunity that I have um, generated. It's actually setting that stage to close one, as we saw, it's hitting save. It's doing that same event on another opportunity. It's navigating to a recurring donation, as we saw. It's setting it to close. And then it's doing those validation steps I talked about. Going back to an opportunity, checking to make sure it's closed one. And then since that recurring donation was closed, it's making sure those future donations, those future opportunities are set to close lost. So I'm going to go ahead and make a change just so we can see that this test can, of course, be changed um, simply. Robot framework, as you can tell, it's human readable. So everything is defined by spaces or double spaces. And generally, when you write it, you're going to write it in a way so it's very easy to read. That's the whole point of robot framework, which is, again, running on top of Python. And so in this case, I want to go ahead and change this to close loss. So the second opportunity that we look at, it should now switch to closed lost instead of closed one when it makes that edit. So I'm going to go ahead and run this test again. QMIS CI is using Salesforce DX to query the org, find its information, tell it that it wants to open, and then begin running the test. So in the, again, in the background, it is creating some sample data. So for example, the recurring donation, which generate these opportunities. On this one, we are still going to modify it to closed one. But on the second opportunity, if you remember, we change the test to now change the stage to closed lost instead of closed one. The next step of this test is actually going to that custom object recurring donations. It's going to go ahead and close it out still. This will run some NPSP triggers in the background, which will modify related opportunities, including closing out those future ones. And then it's going to jump back over to that second opportunity and double check the value. Now, if you remember in the test, it's actually trying to verify that that value should still be closed one, but I modified it so that it was closed lost. And you will see that it's going to remain on closed lost, which should generate a failure in this test. And you can see here, it is indeed closed lost. I'm going to jump back over here to my CLI and take a look. And you'll see that indeed this test has failed and it's reported that back to me. And with any good testing framework, I'm definitely going to want to be able to look at those logs and see what happened. So I'll go ahead and do that. I've actually got this open over here in my browser. And we can see we are getting a failure. This should all be familiar. Again, if you're used to looking at robot framework log files, these are the different keywords that have been running, along with their status and some information about what's going on. But down here, we see this keyword is red and it failed. So I'll go ahead and take a look. It's saying that the locator was not found. So it was looking for this closed one value. But of course, it was not able to find it because it was closed lost. But if I didn't know that, I could actually take a look at this capture screenshot keyword that ran because of the failure. Again, using Selenium in the background, it's capturing some of this information about what's going on. And we can see that this is indeed closed lost. So that's why this particular test failed. Now, you might be imagining with this framework, I could be running these in a CI CD tool on, let's say, every commit. If I'm working with other teams, I want these all to automate and run and give me information back based on any changes that the developer might make. Now, I want to go back and actually look at my test again and look at a few of the keywords. And so we can see we have some about going to different pages, like this opportunity page. I mentioned earlier in storing sessions. Particularly, I want to look at this API query installment keyword. So this is one that may or may not be familiar, probably not familiar because it actually is localized to the MPSP repo, in particular is in this MPSP robot file. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that one. See if I can find this keyword. There it is, API query installment. 
we can see this is where this keyword is defined, this robot keyword. And in it, we actually have another keyword called Salesforce query. And I wanted to highlight this one because this is actually part of the salesforce.robot library. You can see at the very top of this file that we are calling that library, salesforce.robot. And I actually have some of the documentation open. This is actually Cumulo CI documentation, but it specifically talks about the Salesforce robot library, it's something else that I'll link to in the description. But we can see under keywords here, we have some available Salesforce delete, Salesforce get, query, update, etc. So these are ones that of course you can use and add to your robot files if you want to be able to call these keywords. A really quick demo of how to use robot framework to automate Salesforce. I hope that you can use these keywords in a variety of projects to automate either your setup of Salesforce, your testing of Salesforce, or probably a lot of other use cases.